Thank you for tuning in to the best parenting show on the internet. Post Daily Dose. Good afternoon, Facebook family, and welcome to another episode of Post Daily Dose with me, your trusted parenting advisor, faithful guidance, serving on the healing journey with my name, Big Papa Brian Post. I am out in the middle of hill country, not really, I don't think it's hill country, it's kind of flat country part of Texas, and it is a hundred and something degrees, and I was on the road, and I needed to pull over so I could chop it up with you guys, because yesterday I had a little bit of jet lag, so just tired um, don't even know the signal is not very good so it's probably going to just record and maybe show up later but I um, wanted to talk to you guys real quick about teens consequences and bad choices a lot of parents are motivated when they have teenagers to believe that your teen has to have consequences teenagers make stupid decisions they do stuff that makes no sense A parent of a teenager who doesn't have a teenager that makes some kind of stupid mistake from the age of 13 to 18 or 19 and most of us because of the traditional way in which we're raised we want to or we not that necessarily that we want to because if you're following the post parenting model a love based model then you know I'm not a big consequences advocate but your blueprints tell you that the child needs a consequence for their behavior and I had that situation come up I was talking to a, a parent believe it or not at 3 30 in the morning um, just a couple days ago about something that they had discovered with their teenager and you know his, his say this I have said it until I am literally blue in the face either even though I'm you know quite black actually and not blue but I've said it ad nauseum over the last 20 something plus years when you hello Carrie when you give a child a consequence no matter when you do it and the context in which you do it in no matter how gentle you are hey there Valerie Williams no matter how gentle you are with it here's what happens Whatever behavior that the teen did that they, even though they don't tell you, that they actually feel bad about, that eventually led to them, leads to them getting in trouble by you, whatever it may be, hello, Komozo Sampa. The moment you give them a consequence, and see, this is what most parents don't, don't understand, is that you're, you have good kids, you raise kids. Some of some of you have adopted children who have early early trauma, foster children with early trauma, biological children with early trauma. It does not matter. Your children love you. They know that ultimately you love them, but their blueprints cause them to feel really stress sensitive, really fearful, really overwhelmed. So they they make bad decisions, and you believe that once you discover this bad decision that they make, that you have to give them a consequence. If they actually show you or tell you in the moment, and the reason is because, number one, when they do something that they know they're not supposed to do, that's coming from a place of stress. I know that's hard to wrap your brain around, but that's coming from a place of stress. Your children only do things that they're not supposed to do when they go outside of their window of tolerance for stress and they're seeking soothing. You can try to you can try to paint it in every other kind of ugly way that you want, but it's not going to be beneficial. When your child goes outside of their window of tolerance and they're doing something they're not supposed to, maybe sneaking a cell phone, okay? Or maybe being on their iPad in the middle of the night when they're supposed to turn it off at 10 o'clock. They feel bad about it. And depending on how you handle it is the, really speaks to the intensity of how bad they actually feel 
or how quickly they shut off and go into survival. See, that's the thing. When you catch your child having done something that they're not supposed to, they go into survival because they're stressed and they get scared. But when you get really mad at them and when you become, I was doing really well, lost you there for a moment. And when you give them a consequence, rather than feeling bad about their actions and their decision, rather than feeling bad about the fact that they let you down, that they did something they know they weren't supposed to, the moment you give them a consequence, you become the threat. That is the problem with consequences. Well, that's one of, one of many problems with consequences. When you become the threat, it takes them out of their, their ability to have empathy and, and access their morality and to allow that natural healthy guilt to sit on, on their psyche. It takes all that away and it projects you as being the person of threat. So you become the person that they focus on. That is where we mess up when it comes to our teens and consequences and the bad choices that they make. Here's what you gotta do. If you, I'm telling you, this is what you gotta do. And the problem is, you're, you're, you, as parents, we can get so far away from this because our kids give us so many opportunities, you know, to reenact our traditional parenting beliefs. Hey there, Patrick. Hey, Sue. Here's what you have to do when your child messes up. Take a deep breath. Look at them. Put sadness on your face. Put hurt on your face. Say, I wish you hadn't done that. That makes me really sad. And then walk away. Oh my God, that is so powerful. Walk away. Don't say anything else. Let them sit in their own shame and guilt and sadness and fear and overwhelm. Let them sit in it because that is what develops the moral compass. Internal shame, internal guilt, internal fear, internal anxiety is what develops the internal moral compass. You're getting mad and threatening and consequencing and taking stuff away and shaming them. Hey, Sephora, and shaming them and doing all the things that your parents would have, do, would have done does nothing for the internal development of their moral compass. We keep taking that away. Every time we try to punish our children, we take away the opportunity for the development of their moral compass by making it about us. We make it about us. We become threatened and then we want to give them a consequence. We make it about us and we take away the opportunity without realizing. Just have faith. Have faith. And if you can just focus on creating a strong enough relationship in a very short period of time, your child, listen to this, your child will be so internally to feel that internal pain that they will stop and literally think before making a bad choice. That's what we want to create. And here's the thing, guys. We want to do it while they're teens. We don't want to wait until they're adults. We want to train them now. We want to teach them now. We want to let that internal moral compass develop now while they're still in your home. Have that closeness while you still see them every single day. You don't want to keep giving them consequences all the time up until they turn 18. Then you've got no relationship and then they just leave home. And guess what's going to happen? They're going to go out and face consequences of life without any internal moral compass. We have an investment and an obligation in our children, providing them an opportunity to feel the connection and power of relationship, to feel the connection and power of and to allow that to guide them throughout the rest of their life. The teenage years is just a short period of time. Don't give up on your children, have faith, take some deep breaths. Remember, in any, in any given situation, we always have two choices. We can continue to react from the same blueprints of stress, fear, and overwhelm, or we can stop, we can slow down, take your three to 10 deep breaths, and choose love. Big Papa loves you. God bless each and every one of you. And I'll see you tomorrow.